So here, this is um, the hip bone. This surface here is called the auricular surface. It looks like the auricle of the ear, and it is this surface that is the articular surface with the sacrum, sacroiliac joint. The surface that is located posteriorly is for the attachment of ligaments. It is not the articular surface. It is this one, which looks like the auricle and is called the auricular surface. Here you can see the acetabulum, which receives the head of the femur. Do you have an idea about this part of bone here? What do we call it? To which part of the hip bone it belongs? I just drew the, the borders. Exactly. So it is, it's a tubercle in the pubis. What do we call it? It's a pubic tubercle. Why I am concerned about it is that because it is a palpable surface anatomical landmarks. It can be palpated and here attached to it is a ligament, which is called the inguinal ligament. Okay. So I'm asking about what is the sex of this pelvis? Why? What is the thing that made you feel that it's wider? I, I don't have any comparison. Okay, so that pubic or subpubic angle is wide. It like, it's like a Roman arch or the angle between the index and thumb. That is the reason that I can think of that it's a female pelvis. More likely, it's a female pelvis. Thank you. And obviously, this is a male pelvis. You can see clearly that the angle here is narrower. And again, in the pelvis looks like rough, the bony markings, it is deeper. Again, I don't have comparison, but you can compare it. It is much deeper from here to here. It is much deeper than the female pelvis and it is narrower. Okay. If you can identify this bone and tell me something about it. That's the sacrum. So what do you know about the sacrum? Okay. So how many vertebrae? Five vertebrae. You can, you can tell because we have four foramina here. So if you have five vertebrae, you have four spaces in between them. What do you think this surface is? Just imagine that it fits into the skeleton. Yeah. So what do we call this joint here? This bone is the sacrum, isn't it? And what about this bone? We have the sacrum and we have, what is this bone? The other one? It is the ilium. So it is the sacroiliac joint. My last question to you is, what type of joint is this? Hmm? Fibrous joint, cartilaginous. It is synovial joint, but the unusual thing about it is that there is no much movement taking place at this joint. Yes. Yes, so these joints in general, they will become more mobile, but not to the extent of mobility of like joints like the shoulder joint or the hip joint or the knee joint, but the fibrous tissue will become more pliable because of the secretion of a hormone called relaxin. And that's why females toward the end of pregnancy, they usually have more back aches and pains because their fibrous tissue will become relaxed. And so the bones are going to bear more of the weight. Okay, so this is um, just to show you a plastic model here and look at the whitish line. This is the peritoneum coming from the anterior abdominal wall over the uh, superior surface of the urinary bladder and then reflected on the anterior surface of the uterus 
creating a pouch, which is called the utero vesicle pouch, and then coming back on the um, posterior aspect of the uterus here, covering a little bit of the vagina, and then reflected on the rectum. And this is the pouch of Douglas is located here. Do you have an idea about this whitish structure here? Is it in the pelvis or in the perineum? It is in the perineum, below the, below the pelvis. So below the pelvis is the perineum, located between the vulva or the vestibule and the anal canal. And it doesn't look like it has muscles, so it's not pinkish like the other muscles. It is white, which means that it is formed mainly of fibrous tissue. Any idea? Yeah, no? So, yes, uh, any, anybody can jump in and uh, answer? Yes? So this is the perineal body that we should be very careful about it. It's the anchorage point of many muscles that, uh, that are located in uh, this area. That's why an episiotomy is usually done by cutting, making an incision from the posterior part of the vagina. Yes, thank you very much. So, yes, go ahead. No, you can only see here the remains of the urogenital diaphragm somewhere here, which um, uh, closes the entire part of the pelvic diaphragm. Why you cannot see it? Because on this side, it is obscured by the viscera. On the other side, that is closer to you, let's say, it is in the form of a thin muscular tissue. So it has been removed. We are in a mid-sagittal section, as that's why we cannot see it. We have to go more laterally in order to be able to see it. Yes, that's a very good question. It is the pelvic floor. It is the pelvic diaphragm, mainly formed of levator and eye muscle. Yes, there are, there are um, other muscle fibers uh, as well. Okay, so this is a plastic model to be oriented. This is anterior, this will be posterior. We are looking from above and behind. And so again, that will be the pouch of Douglas. This is the urinary bladder. And you can see the uterine tube. And this yellowish structure here is the ovary. It's connected to the back of the broad ligament, not to the anterior part. And this is the round ligament of the uterus, the embryonic remnant. You can see it goes to the anterior abdominal wall because it's going to terminate eventually into the labia majora. And that is the ureter. You can see that it crosses the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Identify this artery. Yes. That is a testicular artery. Can you tell me what is the origin of the testicular artery? That is the abdominal aorta. Thank you. So you can see here that we have testicular artery. We have a group of veins. We have the vas with them. Of course, there are some nerves as well. And all these structures, they are surrounded by fibrous tissue and some muscle fibers, coats, like three coats of fibrous tissue and a coat of muscle. This is what we call the spermatic cord. And you can easily uh, differentiate the vase by feeling it. It's cord-like. You can see here that all of them, they are going ultimately to enter into the abdomen through the um, inguinal canal. That inguinal canal is a weakness in the anterior abdominal wall, and through it, a hernia can take place. Sometimes some of these hernias, like the indirect inguinal hernia, can go down into the scrotum because it is in continuity with the scrotum. Okay, identify the structure, easy. That is the epididymis, thank you very much. Identify A and B. Yes, so what made you th think that it's the prostate gland? 
Okay, yeah, and it is below the bladder. And, it, and the subject is a male. What is B? Okay, it is located behind the urinary bladder. Is it the vase? No, because this is the vase. Is it the ureter? Because the ureter comes from above. So what, what else do we have behind the urinary bladder that looks like it's a, a little bit circulated like this? Okay, um, do I have some someone else to answer me this? Yes, go ahead. Yes, one of you. That is the seminal vesicle, okay, from one side. Thank you. This is a plastic model to show you the pelvic diaphragm from above. And you can see that this pelvic diaphragm is deficient anteriorly. Now, look at it from below. It is deficient anteriorly, the pelvic diaphragm. And here, the deficiency has been closed by this urogenital diaphragm, which is made of fibrous tissue and muscle fibers. And it's a smaller diaphragm, it's only located anteriorly. Does this answer your question? Identify the structure. This is the bulb of the vestibule, your nose. That's the bartering gland. Also, the other name of this gland, they call it the greater vestibular gland because it is so closely related to the bulb of the vestibule. What is the vestibule? I'm giving you a clue. It is the area that is surrounded by the labia minora, the common opening for the urethra and the vagina. We call it the vestibule. And this will be the bulb of the vestibule. We have two bulbs. Unlike in the male, we have two bulbs in the female. And that will be the urogenital diaphragm. This will be the urogenital diaphragm, while this one behind here is the pelvic diaphragm or uh, the pelvic floor, because the pelvic floor is deficient anteriorly and is closed by the urogenital diaphragm. Yes, so I'm, I'm going to draw a mid-sagittal section so I have here the urinary bladder. That will be the sacrum. That will be the pubic symphysis here. And then back of the bladder, I have the prostate gland. And then below the prostate gland, there is a, this sandwich. I'm going to use another color here to indicate that there is muscle fibers in it. This is the urogenital diaphragm, a sandwich of two black lines, which are fibrous tissue, and between them, the muscle fibers. Now, that will be the urethra. Starting from the urinary bladder into the prostate, this will be prostate urethra. And it receives ejaculatory ducts. Then the urethra, for a very short distance, goes into the urogenital diaphragm. And this will be the membranous urethra. What is the significance of this? Is that these orange colored muscle fibers, they are called the sphincter urethry muscle. It is the external sphincter. It is the voluntary sphincter that you can use to hold your urine. Okay, so that's why it should pass through them in the urogenital diaphragm. And it is only this short, very short segment that is called the membranous urethra. And then after that, it will go into the um, penis and becomes the penile urethra. Let me draw that to you. That will be the bulb of the penis here, and that corpus spongiosum descending into the glands. What I'm missing is the corpus cavernosum, so that will be the urethra in the in the bulb, and then in the remaining part of the corpus spongiosum. That's why it's sometimes it's called the spongy urethra and opens here 
into the external urethral meatus. So usually it is in three parts, is the prostatic, membranous, and the spongy urethra, or uh, penile urethra, you can say. You can easily see the prostatic urethra. You can easily see the penile urethra and the corpus spongiosum. But the, this one, the membranous urethra, no, it was difficult to see because, because it is a very short segment and the urogenital diaphragm is barely identified.